Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to this fantastic Thursday. We've got an awesome webinar coming up. Uh, so please, please hop over to the chat. Um, I think it's quite important to set the setting to all panelists and attendees and all attendees. Um, so that means everyone can see what you what you're asking, what you're commenting, and when you're introducing yourself. So please use it to introduce yourself and um, say hello. I will officially introduce uh, the gents, gents um, in this um, webinar in a, in a couple of minutes. Um, I think it's going to be a, a pretty cool one. We've got an amazing uh, case study. Um, so I'm really looking forward to, to learning about um, uh, Lloyds of London and how they tackled uh, procurement. We'll just hop over to the chat and see who's there. Bell's here, Karn's here. Fred is greeting everyone. Fred is one of the panelists, so I already said hi to him. Um, very good. Please, please, please introduce yourselves in the in the chat and and hop over there. We'll probably kick off in a, in a minute or two just to allow people to get to the to the virtual door. Um, I'm pretty sure there's going to be a couple more people who want to know who how to improve their uh, improve their bottom line. Um, it's not a it's not a bad outcome. Uh, Georgie Georgina is in the house and and Joan. So great to see you there, uh, Joan as well. And like Georgina says, um, um, it, please uh, address your chats to all panelists and attendees. That means everyone can see um, what you're up to in the in the chat. And I think uh, since there's going to be a recording anyway for the for the latecomers and they'll, uh, our experience with webinars lately um, um, uh, is that, that that there's going to be quite a quite a few of those. So so very well done to everyone who's who's here already. That that is how to do it. So uh, th thanks um, thanks for that. Um, I'm just going to stop sharing quickly and say go to. The official opening, um, improve your bottom line, the strategic procurement success story you need to hear. Obviously the partner for this um, for this webinar is Workday, uh, which is a longstanding supporter of the CFO South Africa community and finance and our network. And I think many of, you, many of you know them for their fabulous HR and finance systems, but uh, today we'll look at procurement in particular. Um, I don't know if you know, and I think it was in the invite, but the high performing procurement organizations save 85% more costs, enjoy double return on investment, and are five times more likely to be seen as a valuable business partner. So we're really going to chat about the strategic approach to sourcing today, and we have an amazing case study. Uh, we also have experts from two of the um, uh, preeminent capitals of, uh, of, the, of the world. So Ravine uh, Nair is, uh, is, is based in Dublin. And Frederic Portal is coming from, from Paris uh, to us. So um, we're in a great international company um, today. They both work for, for Workday and have their various roles in this, um, in this webinar. Later, um, after, after Ravine will kick this, uh, this conversation off just now, we'll hear from, um, from Lloyds of London CPO, Tony Welch. And, and as you guys know, CPO stands for Chief Procurement Officer. Uh, Tony recently had a had an interview did an interview with Frederick from from Workday. It was pre-recorded for for this purpose, and it's a super super cool case study. Uh, and I think you're really going to enjoy that one. So, um, with having said all that, I'm going to hand over to um, Ravine, account executive um, at Workday in Dublin, and he's going to kick off uh, with some trends in procurement um, and um, his take um, on the topic. So, Ravine, over to you. Perfect. Good morning, all. Let me just share my screen now. Um, Joe, let's just say in host disabled participant sharing screen. Could you just give me access? Now, Sorry about that. No problem. Perfect. So, good.
Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. We're going to be talking about transforming the Office of Procurement from reactive to strategic. So first off, just to thank everyone who's taking the time to sit down with us. We do recognize that it's unusually difficult circumstances at the minute. So it's great to see everyone remotely jo join this and, and be able to sit with us as we talk through turning from reactive to strategic. So to start off, just a, a standard Workday Safe Harbor Agreement. Please do base all buying decisions off current functionality. And from Workday today, we have myself, so based out of Dublin. I'm a strategic sourcing account executive, and we've got Frederick Portal, who's a solution marketing director out of France. So just a short agenda. Um, I'll talk through Workday spend management, and then we'll pass straight across to Tony and Fred to really discuss um, the journey on being a, strate a strategic partner to the business and understanding what Lloyds have achieved with partnering with Workday. And then we'll do a live Q&A at the end. If there's any questions, just pop them in the chat and we can answer them as we go. So to start off, managing your spend has grown in importance as organizations seek to reorganize procurement and finance teams. That's for value generation, risk reduction, and strategic support. We believe if finance partners with procurement, this can help manage and control spend liabilities that will impact your bottom line. In fact, some of our customers have seen upwards of 40 million in savings for every billion in spend with the movement from reactive and siloed to proactive and aligned procurement. Today, I'm gonna to share with you how a strategy and journey towards proactive spend management can bring alignment throughout the organization and have a substantial impact on your bottom line. So we've known that when finance and procurement are aligned, they're better able to partner and drive better business outcomes. Some recent stats back this up and emphasize the importance of this relationship and the value of accelerating your digital initiatives. According to Accenture, 78% of CFOs are heading up efforts to improve efficiency through adoption of digital technology. According to Hackett, 72% of CFOs stated an increased demand for forward-looking information from key stakeholders within their business. And finally, according to Deloitte, have seen 66% of companies are pursuing cost reduction efforts in the next year. But what research has also shown is that high performing procurement organizations are better prepared for the challenges ahead. A 2020 procurement performance benchmark analysis by the Hackett Group found that world-class procurement functions deliver 85% higher cost reduction savings, operate at a 20% lower cost, and run with 28% fewer full-time equivalents. And as a result, they've been able to achieve 2.2 times higher the return on investment than their peers and are five times more likely to be viewed as that valued business partner. And this is very much in line with what the results of our customers have seen. Keeping pace with world-class performance requires a relentless pursuit of improvements that drives new levels of efficiency and effectiveness, deliver an optimal stakeholder experience and enable the enterprise transformation and innovation. We at Workday believe to maximize the impact as a procurement and sourcing organization, a new paradigm is needed to help scale sourcing operations through better enterprise and supplier engagement. One that offers ease of use and enjoyable experience because we've learned that you need to offer the end user an intuitive experience that's ultimately going to help drive usage and result. One that ensures high adoption and collaboration to make the process as easy for everyone across the business. And that's with stakeholders, suppliers, and really making sure that they're collaborating in order to drive those savings to the bottom line. And ultimately, one that provides visibility and rapid time to value. So you can hit the ground running and enable that sourcing me measurement and showing the business what procurement are doing as a strategic business partner. Workday as a solution covers the full source to pay continuum. But today, we're really going to focus on the left-hand side of this dial, which is the source to contract piece, which we know as Workday Strategic Sourcing. It was previously known as Scout RFP. It's a company we acquired in 2019. It's really about the ability to understand project pipeline, source to contract, and the onboarding of strategic suppliers. So this can be carried over in the downstream procure to pay. But as we meet multiple organizations across the globe, we see that the sourcing process is broken and presents unnecessary challenges for procurement to really be leveraged as that strategic business partner. We see legacy software systems, disparate spreadsheets and email chains, ultimately hindering adoption and blocking effective collaboration, making performance metrics difficult to measure and a result in limited supplier engagement. In short, they drag the enterprise and sourcing back into the weeds of tactical administration, 
crippling success and the ability for procurement to reach its full potential. So the value of investing in strategic sourcing will accelerate your spend under strategic management. This is the foundation for better partnering with the business, increasing sourcing projects and high performing contracts. And this is all while seeing immediate cost reduction, saving hundreds of thousands often in the first few projects and continue to scale that into the months ahead into the millions. We now have over 350 customers using Workday Strategic Sourcing that have embarked on this journey with us. They've saved money, they've achieved ROI beyond their expectations and gained many efficiencies and improve outcomes as their journey evolved. So what does the solution actually do? We start off on the left-hand side with intake, which is our internal ticketing system to seamlessly allow procurement and sourcing teams to partner with business stakeholders to establish demand for sourcing initiatives. From there, they can manage and prioritize their sourcing pipeline to ensure that the organization is focused on the right projects that align with strategic priorities. This then flows into the execution of the sourcing process, which encompasses the setup and publication of ORFX events, establishing bidding activities with suppliers at scale and determining the optimal award scenario. Once you've awarded the supplier, you can then establish contracts, work with stakeholders on reviews and approvals and process digital signatures. And if a new supplier has been onboarded, this is someone you might not have worked with before, you can manage all supplier management and data collection activities within the platform. So that supplier can be really and fully utilized. And finally, our solution does allow you to close the loop on this process through performance management activities, including quarterly business reviews and development plans, ultimately making sure you get the most out of your supplier. Lastly, one of the most important things to mention is that all the data within the platform can be tracked and reported on. We do offer pre-built connectors to Tableau and Power of BI for those customers that are looking to build out more advanced visualizations. But our robust API does allow you to connect the platform to any other important ERP or P2P solutions or Workday. And this is to really make sure you can synchronize data, including supplier and contract information, information and ultimately making sure you have purchasing compliance. Lastly, before I hand back over to Fred and Tony to go through the Lloyd story, we're not an industry specific solution. We're used in over 150 countries. We work with customers to help drive adoption, return on investment, and ultimately stakeholder engagement. Making sure procurement is no longer that black box and it can be leveraged as the business as a strategic business partner. We don't want procurement to be fighting fires and being brought laid into a purchasing process. We want procurement to be able to forecast and plan and be utilized as the partner it needs to be. We have customers across large enterprise, such as Netflix and Spotify. And the reason I name Netflix and Spotify is you don't require training when you sign up for Netflix and Spotify. So why should procurement solutions involve multiple manuals and long training sessions? We've been extremely su successful to date, down to our UI and UX giving that end user an intuitive experience, but allowing them to make data-driven decisions, which is ultimately gonna drive savings to the bottom line. And I'll leave with the last slide of some of our medium enterprise customers. And I will stop sharing my screen and pass across to watch the Lloyd's webinar. Thank you. Thank you very much for that, uh, Ravine. Um, as you already indicated, um, um, the, the proof is in the in the pudding or the eating. I always get always get this uh, the saying wrong. Uh, so, but but at least I've used them both now. So it's one of those. Um, and 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 that's really where the customer story comes in. So I, I think uh, I think Fred, Frederick has been so kind to to record um, an interview with the chief procurement officer of Lloyd's, and we're now going to go to that. So let me just um, make sure the sound is also shared and please all make a big noise in the in the chat um, if it if it's not working but um, of course we have tested this and it worked then so there we go so hello Tony and uh, thank you for joining us today uh, you're the chief um, procurement officer at Lloyd's for the last four years and I think it would be very helpful for uh, everyone if you can present yourself and your role uh, at Lloyd's as well as Lloyd's. Well, thank you for the invite. Um, I think I'll probably start with the introduction of Lloyd's. Um, I mean, Lloyd's as, as, as a marketplace started back in 1688. Uh, so we've been around for uh, 330 years, as the slide says. Um, and, and, this, the, and 
you know, Lloyd's is a world leading insurance and reinsurance marketplace. Uh, we have a staggering diverse portfolio, um, having insured the first car, the first plane, and the first satellites. But we, we also do what we would call cultural assets, um, some quirky ones like the Beatles catalog and uh, David Beckham's feet. Uh, so it's very diverse in what we do. Um, Lloyd's is based in um, Lime Street, uh, in our very famous iconic building, um, which uh, if anyone knows the building is renowned because it's an inside out building. All our services are on the outside, including our lifts for the people who don't like heights. Um, and we have some on average around 5,000 people moving through our underwriting floor on a daily basis. Um, and, and as this slide shows, there's over 43,000 people and I think that's what's unique. We, we, we are a market. Um, there isn't many other areas you can compare us to. Uh, so, so the introduction of Workday within our organization has been critical um, to my role as CPO, um, because over the last four years, we've built an effective group procurement function, and we'll continue to develop and grow that. But the introduction of new procurement systems, such as Workday is integral part of this. Uh, so uh, we work that we're able to provide consistency in our global procurement process and empower employees, uh, which is really important. Um, and, and also our managers to make more effective spending decisions because they have the data available to them. Uh, I don't know if we want to move on to the next slide. I mean, I, I won't read these slides. I mean, it, it, you know, who we are. So, you know, Lloyd's is a market that provides leadership and insight uh, to understand risk. And that's what we do, that's what we are very good at, uh, and that's what we provide to our customers globally. Uh, I talked about the history, uh, but the interesting thing about our history is that pre-pandemic, we launched probably the biggest transformation, market transformation that's ever been uh, uh, attempted in Lloyd's. Um, so we have a program called Future at Lloyd's, so I encourage anyone and everyone to go on our website to get more insight into that. So we started our digital uh, focus, uh, as I say, pre-pandemic. So we're in a good place. And, and because of where we all are after the challenging year, you know, that ex that's been accelerated. So again, by us implementing Workday really does support that, that strategic vision we have. Is there another slide? I think there is another slide, yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is just, again, a summary of some of the key, key first, as the slide says. I mean, uh, and, and, you know, we continue to, you know, anticipate risk around the world. I mean, you know, the, the dial has moved. I mean, cyber now is, 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 is clearly one of our key areas for all of our businesses, um, but also, you know, if we look at things like the ESG um, strategies of our, of our businesses, again, this is something we're really, really very supportive of. Uh, and that's something that we focus on as well with our, our customers. So one thing I really love, uh, Tony, from, from Lloyd's, right? It's uh, 1688, uh, the, the starting point of the company. And you went through a lot of changes. You adapt over the years. Can you share a little bit about your procurement organization and um, operation? Yeah, I mean, um, I've been at Lloyd's four years and I think we have a real desire and appetite for change. Um, you know, you have to embed that culture within your business. Um, in some ways, I was fortunate that I, I, there wasn't a procurement function prior to me, which sounds a bit strange. Um, so we, So I've been able to build that from, uh, from, from really a, a blank canvas. Um, but I've built a number of procurement functions. So I've got the bruises from previous um, implementations and transformations. But you know, I think for me, when, when I came to Lloyd's, um, you know, one, one of the key areas of focus was to get to know the business, get to know my stakeholders, because my procurement team is known as a center of expertise. And I think that's a really important message. You know, procurement is a critical function for any business. Now, some businesses 
embrace that and, and other businesses need to be taken on that journey. I, I was very fortunate that the, the board of Lloyd's, this is something that they've been extremely supportive of. So I've always had their support to drive um, our approach, which, 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 which is really from a, a bottom up, you know, because of the world we live in, in terms of risk, risk is really one of our key fundamentals. I mean, I think the, the, the discussion everyone gets into around procurement always seems to go straight to cost. I think we've moved on from that. You know, procurement is a lot more than just cost. Um, yes, that's part of our role, but risk mitigation, collaboration, you know, creating those really strong partnerships with, with our third parties is now, for me, more important than just the cost discussion. And also, if you get into the cost discussion, you know, I think that that's a message that doesn't always get embraced within your organisation. So again, we don't even talk about cost reduction. We talk about investment opportunities and we talk about how we can support the business in driving, you know, our, our, our change agenda across the organisation. So you, you've been doing that transformation of procurement uh, from the prep code we had like at least four times already in your career. What, what were the sort of challenge uh, you were facing prior to selecting workday strategic sourcing at Lloyd's? Um, uh, well, I mean, you know, first of all, visibility. Uh, you know, we're a global organization. And when I first arrived, you know, in, in, in the world we live in now, data is, is just so critical and so important. And trying to get to data was challenging. Getting data that was clean and valuable was, was extremely challenging. It took a huge amount of resources to pull that kind of information together. So without that information, you can't actually make particularly clear strategic decisions. You can't actually make very clear business decisions. And, and probably more importantly, you become, you become quite transactional and reactive rather than proactive. It's hard to plan. So, so you know, ensuring that visibility was one of the key drivers of, of us, you know, selecting um, a work, work day as our partner so that we can, we can get to, you know, we can start to see that information and use it in a very, very structured way. So after that selection, how you were able to transform your sourcing operation on the day-to-day -day work? You know, uh, I think firstly, because we've got the tool that we've that we've we've acquired. I mean, we we launched um, we, we launched uh, the program in October, uh, and the great news is, as of Monday, we've now rolled it rolled the program out globally, which is brilliant um, performance from everyone in the organisation. You know, all the staff have made this possible. Um, so you know, I think that's a great milestone for us. But, you know, it, what it does, you know, again, going back to that risk agenda, we, we, we now know what's going to happen before it happens. Uh, we can manage that risk. Um, it's, a, it's enabled us to think about and work with our colleagues and our risk team to create a far more robust, structured approach. Um, we can talk to the business in advance. So, you know, when we have discussions now, we are talking to them before they make those budget decisions rather than, you know, post. So again, it helps us to be more efficient. I think importantly for me, it means that my team can focus on the really important stuff. We've now got a system that can take care of a lot of the stuff that they had to do manually. So, so I see the benefit of that, but more importantly, they get the benefit of that because, you know, in terms of their actual career, and, and also their day-to-day -day engagement with a business. It allows them to engage at a far higher level. Um, and this is what's important to me in what we do. We see everyone in the organization as our customers. So, we, and we treat them that way. You know, we are there to support them. We are there to provide our expertise. Um, and we also are a pivot in between us and the rest of the business. And again, I think that is a, um, message that doesn't always 
generate around organisations. Uh, you know, we, we we have visibility to so much from the, you know through the whole sourcing um, cycle that we go through. Yeah, so you give more visibility to your your team and automate the process, which allow them to spend more time on business partnering and supporting the business and adding value to the business. So how, how leveraging work they change your innovation strategy at Lloyd's for the procurement? Well, again, I mean, I think you know it just sits nicely with our with our, our corporation strategy around the the innovation. Um, and, and the future of Lloyd's program, because as I say, we, we kicked off in 2019. So I've been working on adapting our you know, strategy to align to our, our, our digital transformation, but also the tools that we now have available to us. So, um, you know, in a strange way, because of the way we all work now, you know, having worked out as a tool actually supports everyone working remotely. Uh, it supports us as managers to manage our people more efficiently. But again, it also allows our people to be empowered, which again, I think is important. Um, you know, it provides us with the tools and support to address our continued focus on transforming the, the procurement function of, within the corporation. So we can provide that risk focus, um, that commercial innovation through greater visibility. Um, you know, data, as I said earlier, is key to what we do. And it, and it has again become, you know, it's become even more important as we work in a different way um, in all of our businesses. Um, the ability to analyze clean data is critical to our collaboration with a business, but also supporting procurement visibility in driving our agenda. Um, and, and also other than just this cost discussion, which I, I keep referring to, because it is procurement is far more than that now. So obviously we talk about the transformation and, and since you implemented, I, I guess, strategic sourcing, what were the outcome? And I, I think we, we talked a little bit about the ROI uh, when we're kind of preparing uh, the, 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 situa the, the, the call and, and maybe you can give us kind of insight on, on kind of the outcome because most of our organization today, uh, what we discussed as well, they're, they're, they're leveraging emails, they're working, spreadsheets and kind of non really full system and you got that experience with four transformations so maybe it'll be good to uh, to share that yeah i mean i think when i arrived at lloyd's um we did not really yeah we didn't really understand who how and why we purchased certain goods uh, it just seemed to happen um you know we had a large supplier base uh which we continued to refine and reduce because that enables us to build stronger partnerships within our business. Um, it allows us to be more joined up in our approach to our change project. Um, it reduces our risk profile uh, and, you know, it delivers greater benefits to the corporation. Uh, and I know Ravin in his slides, he'll, he'll touch on some of the um, key, key points, especially return on investment. Um, but over the last, um, number of years, our return on investment has been particularly high and it's something we do measure. Um, and we, but we're already seeing the benefits of the tool. Uh, you know, we've got a lot of change going on. We would never have been able to deal with the amount of change if we ha didn't have work done. You know, the, the, the amount of RFIs and RFPs that we are doing, we just wouldn't be, we wouldn't have been able to do that without actually going and recruiting a lot more resource. So we're doing more uh with the same um but this the, the the real the real value of workday is the fact that you know by using the, the tool everything is auditable it's date time stamped you know we can communicate with multiple um providers easily uh and to your point frederick you know before you'd have to be keeping an eye on emails and everything else it's all in one place which again, I think is a huge, huge benefit to, to my team and the organization. And, and I think one of the things that we were very, very good at was making sure all of our staff and all our employees understood A, what Workday was, what it was going to provide to us, 
and the benefits. So we, we are very clear on that. And we continue that message in all of our communication. Uh, and we, we have FAQs. We, we, we literally inundate our people with as much information as possible so that they're on, you know, at, but it's also important that we bring them on that journey. So, you know, a lot of our, a number of my team have been heavily involved uh, as SMEs in, in the project, uh, you know, and, and only because of their great work have we delivered uh, this program on time, which, which again is a massive, massive um, um, position to be in and, and everyone should be uh, commended for it. Yeah, embracing that transformation from within the team and carrying it over to the others, I think, like you said, it's, it's key to, to get the success uh, for that transformation. Very much so. So, um, Tony, we, we saw with you that empowering the people, providing self-service self and having a simple tool to use is, is really key uh, to run a, a successful procurement um, and strategic sourcing. So one question I got is, uh, how was your implementation process uh, to run strategic sourcing? Uh, I think the first thing I need to say is that you're always going to have bumps in the road. So I'm not going to sit here and say it was wonderful. Um, but, um, and, and some of that is actually because of the process we were going through actually identified where we did have some gaps, which, you know, until we'd moved, uh, until we pulled our requirements together, you know, it, it clearly wasn't visible. So, so, um, you know, our return on investment is, we talked about two to one, ours is roughly around four to one, and it's something we track. But it's also interesting when we track everything and, you know, Workday now helps us to do that in one place. So we show the value we add, whether that's P&L benefit um, or cost avoidance or, you know, everything we do, because we, we do some quite innovation. In, we, 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 do, we have quite a commercial approach with innovation as well. So, so now the benefit for me is that I can produce dashboard reports that I can share with other executives, uh, which tells them very clearly and simply where we are. Um, and it's something that we, we do very well. Um, because, you know, when we when when we implemented, this was a finance, HR and procurement project. Um, we work very closely with finance. Um, and that's, again, helping enabling us to work even closer with them because we actually go to them to get them to sign off budgets before we start work. We do the work and we get them to sign off at the end. So our numbers and their numbers are literally, it's like looking in a mirror. So, and that's an important value we add to the business. We're not, we're not presenting numbers that are, not, that are new to people. So um, so, so that, that I think is the, the first big, big sort of, um, focus we had. And, and also on the q and I, I noticed a number of people talk about Scout. So the procurement element is Scout for us and, you know, all the things that Ravine's just showed, uh, I'm glad to say we're, we're doing it in, in, in taking that approach. So, you know, especially the valuations, I think that's, that's a huge, huge benefit to us um, because you get consistency uh, across all of your sourcing. Um, you know, we present it in one way. Uh, you know, it's not set, it's not presented in multiple different um, styles. You know, again, it just makes, I think it just embraces why we, we went and, and, and uh, implemented a tool like Workday because, you know, we can talk with confidence to the business. We can show them data which looks and, 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 and you know, not only looks good, but it is, is adding real value. Uh, and I think that gives them confidence in the process as well. And again, that just then bleeds into, you know, the role of procurement and the role that we play to support the business. We, we also took an adopt approach with the implementation. So uh, I've done implementations in the past where you start off with a skateboard and you end up with a Ferrari. So, you know, by doing the adopt approach meant that we actually got delivered this because execution is key at the end of the day. Um, but that doesn't mean that's it. And as I said earlier, I think when we were talking, uh, Frederick, we, we even have focus groups within my team and we're continually working um, with Workday. We, we have regular catch-ups with, with your team uh, and we're always looking at that roadmap to see what else we can do. But it's also taking what we've done from, from implementation 
and, and it's like everything. Once you start to use a tool, you get more comfortable with it, but then you also start to see where the benefits really are. So in some cases, we turn some modules off and turn other modules on because it gives us what we need. So communication and engagement is massively important in, in the whole implementation process. Uh, and I think that's something that we did. It's probably the best I've experienced in, in the, the, the four ER, global ERPs I've done. Uh, I think everyone knew why we were doing it. Everyone knew the benefits of doing it. Um, and again, we empowered our people to be part of that journey. And I think that's really important. Thank you. And then Tony, regarding that transformation and that implementation, how many people were from the procurement team were actively involved in that implementation of wireless strategic sourcing? Um, this may sound strange, but everyone was. I mean, it was something that I was very passionate about that my, my team uh, were all involved. Now, that doesn't mean that was their full-time focus. So we, we had a three, what I would define as SMEs within the, the, the program. Uh, and they did a, an amazing job because, uh, you know, they were dedicated to the program, but they still continued to do other things as well. So, um, and, and we had that across the whole organization. Um, so, uh, as I said before, one of the key things around this whole program has been uh, the communication. So, we, we, we would do things like pre go live emails. Um, so that, that was a brief note that went out to everyone to give everyone a heads up. You know, we, we have a, a workday hub now on our Lloyd's um, internet. Um, we have a procurement hub. So people can know where to go to get all the information that they need. We, we would put articles on our, our My Lloyd's system. Um, we target group procurement, we target our, our key system stakeholders in risk, tax, uh, GT, data, legal. We would target SLT, our SLT. Uh, we did, I did, as a, I was actually one of the sponsors, so I did uh, briefings to our SLT on, on, a, on a regular basis. But we also, you know, communicated cl cl uh, closely with the program team. So. And then to support all of that, we, we, we also produced FAQs because we wanted to remind people what was Workday and Scout. We wanted them to understand why we were making the move. Um, we also wanted them to understand the changes that were coming um, and you know how they would use the tool, um, but also what the benefits were of, of doing this. And then also one of the things we were very clear on was what was, we didn't just, we didn't move the, the dial just to the implementation. We, we kept people informed of the day-to-day -day stuff. So if, if, for example, we were running an RFP, people were going, wanted to know, well, was that in Scout or was that continuing the way we did it before? So we, we were very, very clear to everyone as to where we were on the journey. And, and then also important, the help and support you know, we wanted to make sure that, you know, everyone knew where to go if they weren't clear on, on what the next steps were. So, um, you know, that, that again, I think was very integral to, to our implementation. That might answer some of the question where some people were asking, like, did you roll out strategic sourcing for everything or you got packet of organization or department, they still do it on Excel, on paper, on, on so on? No, so so one, one so, so I think again to all the the audience, we had a clear vision and, and strategy around the rollout. So with the rollout, there are no other ways of doing this. This is like mandated. Yeah. Procurement, procurement has always been mandated uh, for for the last three years. So all sourcing comes through through procurement. There are no exceptions to that. Um, and what as part of the uh, implementation program, we also looked at what systems we would turn off. Um, so we are, we've done that as part of this. So it, it, we haven't implemented Workday on, in addition to what was already out there. These things have all been switched off. Workday is our tool of choice. Um, and, and it's a tool that we all have, which is a tool we all embrace and, and use. That's the only way we can do things now. Good, no, perfect. Well, thank you. I think one last question is because I think we need to wrap up because of the time. Um, 
one question is like, uh, how do you prepare to your organization to embrace that change and limit the disruption and any lesson learned you could share with the team? Um, I think lessons learned, I mean, I've said it a number of times, is communication, you know, being as visible as, as you can, in allowing your, your, your people to be part of that journey, um, allow, you know, giving them that empowerment, let them provide their input uh, because they're critical to it. Um, as I said, I think previously, you know, no, no one can ever sit in front of you and say you didn't have bumps in the road, you do. Um, you know, it's all part of implementation. Uh, but for us to, to move to a global procurement functions, uh, when you think we, we only went live in October, I think is a, a real testament, not only to, to my team, uh, but also the wider Lloyd's uh, organization and, and our staff, but also you guys as a partner uh, and our other partners who helped us to deliver this. Um, we, as I said earlier, we we're already seeing the huge benefits of this. Uh, and it, it was great to see Ravin's presentation because it helps me to uh, sort of validate what we're doing. But the benefits aren't just procurement. You know, again, this goes back to the role we play. You know, we're now being able to provide a lot more information that helps the business run their areas. So we can give clear information to the business to manage their, their supplier base because we can plan better. So we run reports that show all of our activity right to the end of the year. And we, we build that into our pipelines and we're running that constantly, as I said earlier. So the power of the data is something that, you know, you, you, you just cannot underestimate. Um, so, you know, my, my supplier management team have done an amazing job in making sure that, you know, the data that's gone into the system is very, is clean. Um, and, I, and I say that, and again, that would be one, one call out I would make is make, you know, take the time to, to build the foundational um, pieces well, because you then see the benefits um, quickly. Uh, but, but, you know, we, we all use the word about sustainable in, 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 in procurement. It does give you that sustainability uh, going forward. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Thank you. And we're back. So, Frederick, uh, thank you very much for uh, for um, recording that uh, video with uh, with Clive. It's a uh, it's a pity he couldn't be with us uh, today, but uh, this way it worked quite well, I think. Uh, and I think the the benefit for for, for the attendees is uh, is the same. It's, it's it's pretty cool how how the video ended with with some of the benefits that uh, that he lists as well. Um, not just in procurement, but that visibility and the and the and the, the information supply to, to to the decision makers in the business within such a short time frame actually of implementing um, what their their project uh, sounds sounds pretty spectacular so maybe Frederick from your perspective you've obviously um, you've got some more info from 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 clients clients perspective what in, in case when it comes to testimonials what are you hearing from clients what are, what are you sort of picking up and you'll have to go off mute for us to hear you. <laughs> Yeah, that's better, right? <laughs> a little. <laughs> All right. So um, I think that's what we saw with Lloyd's, right? There's a couple of different ways of measuring success or, or, or ROI, right? Um, but one of them that's hard to measure, and that's the one you finish with, is, is really talking about the value of the data that you can provide to the business to take better decisions. Uh, that's a key one. Now, if you want hard metrics, uh, we got things like 97 of the customers see 10% of ROI within the first year. Another one that I love is 89% of the Workday Scout RFP user launched their first event in the first week of signing up. So it show how fast it is to roll out the system and the value it is. So Ravin was mentioning a couple of customers. I can add a couple more. We got LinkedIn, Uber, uh, Netflix, Airbnb, Okta, Salesforce. Uh, and then if we really want to go back to your question about the value, it's uh, the first value, I think it's effectiveness improvement. Uh, 
So if I look at Unum, for example, the requisition process, uh, the PO cycle, they, they reduce it by 86% and improve uh, on-time payment by 38. So it's a win-win situation between the organization who see more the data and then the, the, the suppliers who pay uh, better. Um, another one I like, uh, Biogen, they were running 20 events a year. Uh, now we've a work day uh, in nine months, they run 90. So very quickly, they, they embrace the system and reuse it very quickly. Um, we got others uh, on cost reduction, for example, the Met saved 40 millions to their finance and strategic, uh, strategic and stash procurement transformation, uh, removing like the procurement uh, 29 steps to five single steps. So again, simplifying, make it easier uh, for the people uh, to take it. And another example that I like is Boston Pizza. Uh, they source RFP for like trash bags for 50K per year, uh, sorry, 500K per year, but they also run all their spirits, all their beer, all their soda across um, the Canada uh, through the system. So it's used by large and small organization and for many different variation of it. Okay, yeah, I, think, I think that's very helpful. Uh, helpful. But maybe just to... To try, uh, Rabina, a little bit, um, a little bit more. Obviously, lots of people um, that that hear your story um, ask you. Um, it all sounds very cool, but there are more procurement um, uh, tools out of, out there, and, and I, don't, I don't think there's a point to to pretend that they're, that they're all very bad. But 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 I think I think I think what I wanted to ask you is where where are you, where is your sort of um, solution um, a little bit more special than others? Yeah, of course. Um, so yeah, there's there's a number of kind of source to contract solutions out there, source to pay, um, and we didn't reinvent the wheel when it comes to the sort source to contract piece. What we have done is we've been good at standardizing processes. So we work with startups that are going global, um, in order to get repeatable success, all on that one single system. So you get visibility as a chief procurement officer or a head of procurement, um, as you're starting up this process. Ultimately, it comes down to the end user, so giving them that intuitive experience again. And this is really where our UI and UX separates us, and it's why we've we've signed a number of customers. It's purely down to that ease of use. There's a lot of systems out there, and there's a lot of systems that work. By no means am I saying that they were, were better. It's just the case that ultimately you want someone using the system. Ease of use is going to drive adoption. Dr driving adoption drives savings. Savings make the business happy, and that's where we've been successful, and that's what I suppose our position in the marketplace is we get people using the system. Thanks, thanks, Rafin. Um, uh, maybe one for you, um, Fred. Um, obviously, your work there is pretty massive in in HR and still still growing, and and and, and finance is sort of quickly catching up. Uh, sort of, uh, there's like it feels like there's a wave coming from the US over sort of like over the rest of the world. So, but obviously, what, what you guys, uh, what we're talking about today somehow fits fits in that whole scenario of ERP systems. Maybe you can talk to us a little bit about that because uh, to, just uh, to explain how that works. So, yeah, we, we I think the fact that we're very successful in HR uh, give us some uh, shadow on finance, uh, but the product is strong. Uh, we got many customers using it across the globe. Uh, I think it's a lack of knowing. So people don't know that we're there and we're using the product, the product is different. I would say the way the, st the structure of the product is built give tremendous value for finance leaders. And then we acquire Scout RFPs and integrated Scout within the, within the Workday fabric to add that value to the Workday customers, but not only so the others can still uh, leverage the, the product. And Ravin can talk about that, the integration of other ERP, but it, it really helped like Ravin was saying, the, the full transformation from finance to procurement to strategic sourcing and add the all as a value. The infrastructure of strategic sourcing exactly the same as Workday. So it's really like a, a, a two piece of a coin. And maybe Ravin, you want to talk about the integration with other ERP vendors because that was kind of the, the beginning of the journey with, with, uh, with Scout. Yeah, of course. Um, so we acquired Scout RFP in 2019, so it was a standalone solution. So this, this really means that we have an open API can integrate with any ERP or P2P solution, um, whether it be Workday or any other potentially um, vendor that you're working with. I think from the start, I talked about changing from reactive um, 
to really becoming proactive. And that's what this webinar was about, was showing the fact that if you can start with sourcing, you can get that spend under management and you can start making savings that are ultimately going to give you leverage to the business. And um, so you don't need to be a Workday customer to start using strategic sourcing. Um, it's ultimately looking at what you're using today and then making sure that our open API can, can integrate and, and go from there. And one thing I like from, from Scott, right, because you can read the story of how they started. The two guys who started Scout, they were not from the procurement organization. They were suffering from procurement and basically came from, from the user. So the user was fed up. He wanted to solve the problem and he created the solution, which I think it's a little bit different than a solution, like, you know, product people. Like it's a user who created, uh, created and solved the problem. And I think that's why we're also successful because like Ravin said and mentioned, it is about the user leveraging the system. If they are not leveraging the system, there is no zero value of implementing. So that's why I think it's it's really key the way they engineer the system. But maybe in, in summary, just to, to, to go back to what Tony was sharing at the end um, uh, about the benefits of the system uh, uh, or, or, go, or going go, going with something like uh, like Scout, which now we're, we're, we're strategic sourcing, as I believe is the, the official term for it. Um, obviously, costs, um, and that's that's what, what Ravin just mentioned. Visibility is is one thing that um, that came really strongly out of the Lloyd story, and then the information part uh, in, into the um, into the executive and the decision makers. Is there anything I'm missing there? I think finally it would be stream streamlining processes, making sure that you have one process across the business that that people are going to follow, so you know that risk is not an option. You know that if you're using a solution, you can have that audit always on trail and, and make sure you know what's going on within the business because you could potentially be signing a multi-million euro deal without, without you leveraging a system and knowing who signed what, when. Rabin, uh, Frederick, Frederick um, I think, yeah, before before closing off, I think it's been a super, super useful session uh, for, for people that are really interested in this, um, um, in, in, in this topic, and I think uh, that, that, that's that's our attendees. So thank, I'm going to thank them for for coming just now. But maybe maybe just the last question: What what if they want to? Uh, what if people want to know more? Uh, whether it's about trends and just a general chat, or, or about the product itself. I can see in the chat John Keen introduced himself, but there's also also obviously a, uh, yeah, you, uh, the, the two of you. Yeah, we recommend they, they reach out also to Ravin. Uh, he can schedule like a one-to-one -to, -one to talk about the trend, to talk about the market, what he know because he's speaking a lot with customers. So he got a lot of great knowledge on that. And he can also set up a quick demo so we can tailor the demo to your needs, try to make you understand every step of the, of the process. Uh, that way you know where you can start and what's the value for you. Again, I think because you streamline the process, because I got the data, I can control the data. I know what I'm ordering. I know if the quality is good. Therefore, I know, I know if I need to recontract with that same suppliers, where before you order stuff, if it fell later on, you don't really know is that because of the supplier or, or others. Now you kind of streamline that process, you got total visibility and data that how do you take better decision? And we, unfortunately with COVID, I think it was, we experienced it harder than anybody else, right? Because the sourcing was disrupted. And then if you add tools like that, it's a little bit easier to understand and, and kind of resolve the problem. Perfect. I, I work closely with John Keane. So John manages the South African market. So please, myself or John will be more than happy to jump on a call and, and show the product in action. Okay, fantastic, guys. So thank you. Thank you so much for contributing and Fred for, for recording that um, awesome client interview. Thanks all the, to all the attendees for um, for your time. Um, I think yeah, if you, if you want to get in touch, give me a shout if you don't have the direct details and, and, and we'll connect you. Um, at the bottom right, it says uh, cfo.co.za slash events. If you want to go to more of these awesome webinars, that's the place to check it out. Um, yeah, and lastly, thanks to Workday for your ongoing support of the, the CFO South Africa and finance net finance and our network uh, communities. And um, if you're wondering, um, very, very last PS, uh, if you're wondering why everyone is Workday smiling at the moment, they just heard that their boss is giving them every second Friday off. Uh, so, so how's that for a, for a people focused business? Um, that, gents, uh, thank that, you very much. Way, for that's the way people see it, or work they see it is like if they take care of the employee. The employee take care of the customers and the, the business role. And I, I think 
I don't know if we mentioned that, but we got 97% customer satisfaction. Uh, what we do is we do it for the customers because I guess it's a business practice. An happy customer is less costly than an unhappy customer. Uh, and, and we really dedicate our time to make customers as much as we can happy and using the solution and get their bank for their back, I guess. You certainly mentioned it now. Um, uh, so thanks for that, Frederick uh, from Paris, Ravine from Dublin, and ourselves from Joburg. Uh, we thank you for your time and see you all soon. Speak thank soon. You. Thank you.